Welcome back to Sports Beat. Today is August 9th, and this is episode number 25, and we are recording this in the My Little Falls podcast studio. As always, I'm joined by the man who needs 26 hours in a day to do everything he needs to do, our producer, Dave Warner. What's up? What's up? There's not 26? There's not? Okay, I thought there was. It's no the, wonder I'm running at that pace. <laughs> no wonder you're always running around with like three things going on at I once. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's been a it's been a very very slow news week in politics this week. So uh, saying that, <laughs> we've had a lot of time. So we are going to uh, continue with our wrap up of our summer series uh, with the Diamond Dogs, and we're going to continue with the twist that we took last week of talking to staff. So this week we've got Chris Ezzo. He served as staff uh, for the summer for the Diamond Dogs. Chris, what is your your technical title as operations manager? Is it not? Yes, uh, my te- my technical um, operations is uh, director of oper- uh, direct well operations manager. Um, also, I do the music and home games, which includes the sound effects. Yep. And I also I also do uh, I'm also the clubhouse manager. Yep. Um, and I'm also the uh, I also do social media on the road for the Diamond Dogs. Gotcha. So a little bit of everything. So you can you can definitely give us the inside like look at what goes on. So first off, let's jump back here a little bit. I, I've known you for probably better close to two decades at this point from when I was in high school at Herkimer and you were there with the teams. How did you originally get because you're originally from Syracuse and you like the wrong yes. hockey team because you're a crunch fan and we're all Comets fans as as we should be. But how did you get involved with the Diamond Dogs? Uh, originally, because you've been there this year, this summer was your tenth year there, correct? Uh, it would have been eleven, but because of COVID hit right. last year, it was my tenth year. Gotcha. So how'd you get how'd you get involved with the dogs? Um, uh, it was kind of after um, American Legion. I was helping out Coach Valsek, uh doing the American Legion baseball, and after he got out of it, um, I actually uh, was there for. Uh, American Legion game and I talked to uh, Herkimer played at Little Falls and I actually uh, talked to Travis um, and I asked him if he needed any volunteers. So I initially started out um, selling tickets my first year. Uh, then for about three or four years, I was the mascot. Nice. Um, and, and then I, and then I just worked my way up. Um, I went to, I went to the music for a few years, which I still do now. And then uh, I picked up the role as a clubhouse manager, and then I just started traveling uh, back in 2015. Nice, nice. I started traveling on the road. So in, in all your time there, I mean, I'm sure last year you've never seen anything like this where the whole season got canceled. What was it exactly. like coming back this summer? Because we talked with Vanny last week, and she was telling yeah. us that, you know, bringing everything back in and all the all the things that were going on, there was definitely that hype um, obviously the yes. season didn't end how you guys wanted to, you know, we went to Auburn. It was a must win home, home series that didn't work out the way yes. you wanted it to. And then mother nature gave the last nail in the coffin. But at yep. the beginning of the season, coming back in, what was that like? What was the atmosphere behind the scenes for the things that we couldn't see as just general right. fans watching the game? Um, I'll tell you what, I, I, I went back there, uh, May, it, uh, Second week, uh, two weeks before Memorial Day, because we always start prepping up. And I tell you what, that was like the weirdest feeling just to be back on that field. Me and Travis were hanging up signs, um, and it was just, it was very weird being back there after a year off. But I tell you what, I it was glad to be back. Um, and we had, we had, we had great fan support all year. Um, and the dog pound was great. Um, and I, it was just, and after a couple, it felt weird after the first game, you know, like just being back in, in our, in the usual surrounding of baseball. But after the first couple of games, it was just like, it was back to normal. Nice. Um, so it, it had to have been a fun summer. I mean, usually, you, you know, we know that, you know, alumni of the dogs end up on uh, major league baseball teams, which has happened, you know, not often, but definitely does happen on occasion. But I can't yeah. think in recent memory, and, and this is my recollection, where it's happened during the season. So what was it like in the clubhouse? And again, from the behind the scenes and what you saw of having people, um, players that were drafted and signed into uh, the league during the season. Yes. Uh, Jim, I'll tell you what, uh, knowing, seeing Jimmy get drafted um, and just being around him, the 
uh, the couple days before that, he was he 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 didn't know if he was going to get drafted, and just just a feeling, the accomplishment that he had made made me very proud of. And he said, "Thank you for everything." You know, Jimmy Jimmy is very kind hearted person, and uh, he was just very very down to earth. But I also have to tell you, Rob uh, and Dave, we also had two guys get called up uh, to the Cape Cod League as well. Uh, Sal Fosco, who was our ace of the pitching staff, uh, he got called up um, towards the middle of July. Um, and then the the night before we had to play Auburn, uh, our our starting short shot, Mike Bichetti, uh also got called up to the Cape Cod League. So a little bit of a, it, it's always good to see, but you know, then then you guys have to deal with the, the open gaps in, in the lineup and whatnot to be able to... Yes. And the night before Auburn couldn't have been easy. I mean, obviously we're happy that they made it up and that's what we're all about, oh, but definitely. you know, it, it, it always, it always hurts, especially with the outcome of the game. What could have gone different? Oh yes, definitely. And, um, I'll tell you what, we had, we had two great accomplishments this year, um, to hang, to hang our heads on. We actually, this was the first summer that we actually beat the Mohawks Amsterdam in a head to head series. We beat them three games to one. And that's that's something to be uh, uh, grateful for. And also, we had the first uh, complete game no hitter for Joey Silent up in Watertown. Yeah, and, and the fun part about that one was is the the week that that happened, like two days before the game, he was our guest here. And uh, pretty yeah. sure you text me, and they were in the clubhouse, you know, ribbing him a little bit before and after. And then, yeah. you know, two days later, I, I watched part of it, and Dave texts me at the end. He goes, "Did you just see that?" And then they had it on there and everything. So that's you know. And again, you know, awesome. and as we've talked here offline, uh, Dave and I, and with the, some of the other guests that have came in, you know, everybody kind of takes a takes a dump on what happens here in the Valley. But, you know, we've got big things going on here sometimes, and this is just one of those small examples to show that. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, I love the dogs. Um, you know, they've treated me great. Uh, Travis is like a big brother to me. Um, and He's great to work for. Uh, I love the players, you know, uh, even seeing them accomplish what they, what they have done, uh, going from, you know, when they first get here, the first, that, uh, Memorial day, they don't really know each other, you know? And then they, as the season progresses, they bond as a, as a unity, as a team and as brotherhood. Nice. So, uh, last question on this season is, is, uh, you know, the, the game gets rained out here at home against Auburn coming here because, you know, Mother Nature is just evil like that and has been for a exactly. lot of the summer. And yes. we, uh, Travis posts the the thing saying thank you and everything, which was very well done. And he already says he's planning for next year without giving away too much and not putting you on the spot. Next year is already in plans. Any, uh, any good things that you can talk about that's not too early about? I really haven't heard anything too lately. Um, I might have a wrap up uh, meeting. I'm going to have a wrap up meeting with him possibly tomorrow. Um, just, to, just to close up and uh, you know, and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, 2022 baseball season. Uh, it should be fun and exciting. Um, it's nice to actually have a little bit of break before I do get into the fall season uh, with you, with you Rob. And uh, you know, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice because, you know, you know, we played 48, 47 games this year in summer and uh, like for the two months in six weeks. Yeah. 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 You know, and it's and it gets tiring. And uh, but you know what? Um, I'm glad I'm glad that the dogs have me. I'm very grateful for my opportunity with the dog. So you, you mentioned, and again, in, in full disclosure, Chris and I work in, in Herkimer with athletics there. We've been there for probably close to a decade together working. And I've known you since I was in, in high school when you were there while I was still a student. We've got football and Herkimer coming up. I, I know Dave's involved over here in, in Little Falls. And we've got the, the high school thing coming back up, which was the original kind of like one of the focal points that we want, we wanted to cover here. But then COVID happened and we started podcasts in the middle of like March and 
kind of high school's wrapping up and it's just like a, we we picked horrible freaking timing on that one that's all right yeah timing was good there yeah timing was great we, we got that down pat no so but we got a we got a regular season it looks like coming up at least at it has its stands right now i guess you go back to the the back waiting up, holding right? pattern yeah so we got a uh, soccer football uh cross country yep. tennis in some cases or i believe one of the tennises are up so what are you uh looking field forward hockey. field hockey absolutely what, what do we uh what are we looking forward to so far? Any big games? I know it's a little early, but and obviously we're, we what, have a Herkimer bias, you, but I tell you what, Drum, we've we finally got Dalgo at home. <laughs> so, so that's the, that's the best statement you've ever made. I'm giving you five points for that. That's great. So the, there's Thank the you, there's the joke there in in Herkimer for like and not even kidding for the last six or seven years consecutively, Herkimer has traveled to Dodgeville, and. I, I have family in Dodgeville, so I'm going I'm to get a bunch of shit for this, and that's totally okay. <laughs> for a for a, an area that has such a historic local football program, their field is trash. <laughs> their yeah. field is total trash. And yeah. so we go up there. Like, two times it was – one time it was, like, downpouring. Two times it had rained the morning of or the day before. It's a Saturday. It's <laughs> 1 o'clock. It throws off everything. Personal opinion, if you're playing high school football – in America, it should be played on a Friday night. Period. Yes, I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'm going to dissent. Go, go ahead. He, we're going to get here, a dissent there. Of here course. we go. Here we go. Most of the fields have the crappiest lighting if they have any lighting at all. And if you're trying to take pictures, those night shots are death. Yeah, that's you know. Like, that's I mean, good. yeah. If I had another fifteen grand, I could probably handle it. You know, on the equipment side of yeah. things. But even the new lights they put in at Little Falls, no. I'm already pitching no. to the athletic director. There we go. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm, I, I've got a, I've got a, what is it? A Canon Rebel T six I or whatever it is. Nothing fancy, introductory, and I've taken some pictures there. And when all of the lights at Herkimer last year, we had one of the the lights on the soccer field and the field hockey field that wasn't working properly. So the back end of the end zone, depending on which side you were looking at, was out. But the yeah. the camera that Christy, uh, our athletic director in Herkimer, got, and when the lights are fully there, it works out really well. But I, I agree with you, Jeff Maliner, and I know John has talked about it as well. Yeah. You know, you're at certain events and certain venues, and, and the lighting just doesn't work. And I mean, John said there, I forgot where it was. There was a, there was one, I might have been in West Canada, Dodgeville, in the Battle of Bardo Hill a couple of years ago. He went through like 450 <laughs> pictures to find that one where he yeah. could touch it up enough to put on the front page. Yeah, no, it's it it's really tough, and uh, even some of the uh, basketball courts, like a little false. Oh, yeah. yeah, the there's a row of lights. Yep, kind of missing on the uh, I think it's the west side of the court, and it's like, okay, why did they not put them there? <laughs> you know, yeah, so it's exactly. dark down there. Yes. And uh, so I, I got to tell you, Chris, so the other day I, I stopped over at the high school to pick up some schedules and stuff like that. The new basketball court area is done. And I, I've got to, I've got to tell you, it's it's pretty nice for the first time. And I don't know how many years we have a we have a circle uh, center court okay. with an H in it. So if you ever get a chance in the meantime, uh, reach out to Christy and go and take a take a tour. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nice how the they've done it. We're on the other side of the gym now. New uh, bleachers, oh, yeah. yeah. New bleachers. The hallway is gone. It's it's uh it's I mean, good stuff. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. But it's uh, I I've looked at the schedule. What do you and and I don't know, Dave, if you looked at the schedule here for Little Falls yet. I mean, I haven't it's, yet. It's a little early for some of it because there's so many things in flux. Uh, besides Dodgeville coming into Herkimer, um, any other big games you think, Chris? And it doesn't have to be just isolated to football. You can jump to soccer too. Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, I, sticking with football for a little bit. I think it'll be interesting to uh, see how we do against Sandy Creek. Yep. Sandy Creek. And then we get, and then uh, I think it's a home game. And then I believe we're back on the road for about a two and a half hour trip. Yeah, we're going, we're playing at a neutral site for that game. But I, I, what, oh, we are. What's the name of the, the school? It's, I believe it's, York or something? I think you're right there. It's it's from it's from Western New York and yeah that we yeah it's Section Five School. Yeah, weird. But uh, yeah. but yeah, it'll it'll be um, good to soccer, get that back soccer. in there and go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, soccer. Um, I think all the all the CSC uh, rivalries are back, and I can't wait to can't wait to see some of those games. You know, um, with Frankfurt, Little Falls. You know, 
all the valleys. You know, one, yeah. one thing I, I, and I will close out our interview portion with this. And I know we talk about it every year, but, and I'm sure you, you get it over here in, in little falls and I'm sure it happens all over the place, but I graduated high school, 2008, um, our soccer girls that year and, and the year before, and I believe the year after went pretty well into sectionals. Yeah. Stands are packed. Like back in the day, stands used to be packed for a soccer game. Even if you knew that it was going to be a blowout one way or another, it was packed. Right. And and last year was, you know, it, weird with COVID to begin with. But you go to a, you go to a girl as a guy soccer game. There's nobody there. Even on football games, right. we, we used, if you yeah. weren't there at least at 45 minutes to a half an hour before you weren't getting a parking spot. And exactly. now there's the, the stands are what? 50% capacity. If that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sad. And, and even yeah, when actually, years are good, I don't under, I actually don't understand that. That right. is weird. I'm just thinking of it now. I mean, I'm normally not looking at the stands just focused on the game on the sidelines, but uh, you're right. And, and, and Chris and I have talked about it because we've been in the press box at the soccer and football games for well, a decade now and basketball for that period of time as well. And, the, the biggest complaint you hear about from everybody around here and Chris echo this, if this is wrong is there's nothing to do in the Valley. Okay. That's true. But you know, if you're in high school, show up to a sporting event, even if you don't play, it's a good time to go sit there with your friends. You know, what do you mean? There's nothing to do here. Jeez. I'm going to give somebody my schedule. <laughs> that's true. Start a start a, start an organization like yours. You got a lot to do. Yeah. Anybody who thinks there's nothing to do, call me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it'll it'll be an interesting season. Hopefully we can, you know, full seasons and I don't have to hear the word COVID and we're probably going to have to wear so. masks again, but that's all right. That's okay. That's okay. No, it's not. <laughs> Dave, the wet blanket. Dave, Warner, everybody. No. But uh, anything else, man? Uh, no, I just want to thank you guys for, uh, for having me on and um, can't wait to see some football and soccer in a couple of weeks. There we go. There we go. Thanks, buddy. Talk to you go soon. Dogs. Yeah, they're at a boy. And uh, oh, and by the way, go uh, go comments. Hey, go crunch. <laughs> at a boy. <laughs> we'll talk to you later, man. Thanks. Later. That's Chris Esso with the Diamond Dogs and all around sports guy here in the Valley. Good kid. Good kid. Well, I call him a kid. He's like ten years older than me, fifteen years older than me, probably. That's all right. <laughs> Is he really? Yeah, he's he's great though. We, we you know, it. it who you work with and who you are with, you know, makes a difference. And if I I've seen some of the people around and especially around here, you know, you get the rowdy parents, you get the people that are just being a holes. And there are days where if there was anybody else in the press box next to me or sitting there in a basketball game, I'd want to jump out of the, you know, jump out. And especially being at the board and in basketball, I can say, I'm going to be, you know, photo finish and walk in and everything's good. And he can say, I'm running late and we've, you know, we got a great system in lock. So great. Great to have him here. I know he wanted to be on earlier in the season, but we were getting players and it all worked out for the way it worked out. So, yeah. All right. We're going to jump into a commercial break here and come back with a uh, fully loaded press box segment this week. Visit, Visit Milo Milo Falls, Falls and stay connected, stay connected with, the with the latest news, information, information and events in the city, city, city and the area. The area. Our, Our mission, mission is to generate, to generate interest, interest in the community, community and connect, connect residents, residents in a more, in a more meaningful, meaningful way, way by facilitating, by facilitating deeper, deeper conversations about, about how these stories will shape, shape the, future the future of the Mohawk, of the Mohawk Valley. Valley. Join thousands, thousands of weekly visitors to stay up to date with feature stories, interviews, videos, our event calendar, and print publication, the Mohawk Valley Express. It's about timely local news for the community keeping citizens Citizens informed, informed about, about important, important issues, issues telling, telling about, about the people, the people who, live who live and work, and work here, and giving and locally owned local businesses, businesses the opportunity, the opportunity to, reach to reach a very targeted audience of locals, locals and tourists alike. It's, it's a whole new form of media rich content, content developed specifically, specifically for today's local lifestyle and listeners. You can download our iOS app in the iTunes store. Listen to our car free news and streaming radio station or sign up for weekly newsletters. Stop by today at myfalls.com. You'll be glad you did. And we're back. So we got a fully loaded press box. And there's going to be a couple of interesting facts in here. Uh, I kind of gave you one pre-show, but... Uh, you didn't give me the fact. You started... No, right, right, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah we're, but you're, I think you're going to find this one interesting. So oh. let's dive right in. All right. All right. Starting off with the Comets, uh, Kevin Deneen has been named the third head coach of the Utica Comets. Deneen has spent the last two seasons as the coach of the San Diego Gulls. They had a record of 56, 36, and 9 during his tenure. He is a Quebec City... Quebec native. That's fun having to say that double, but that's all right. 
and he played 19 seasons in the NHL between the Hartford Whalers, Carolina Hurricanes, Philadelphia Flyers, Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Ottawa Senators. So he's a journeyman. He knows what he's doing. Uh, in a Zoom call with the media Thursday of last week, he said that he was excited to get going in the experience with the hometown fans firsthand, our hometown fans firsthand. Um, and his quote that was in the press conference was, one of the best parts about being in our business is being around a fan base. And I point out to Rob Ash what he has done here in Utica and the reputation of that fan base. So going in, it's going to be fun to get in front of the fans, to get our players on the ice. But we feel really important. We feel really importantly that getting our players out and part of the community helps brighten players as individuals as well. So welcome to Kevin. And, you know, everybody's getting ready for a new season coming up with the Comets. They got that fresh ink deal coming in. So going to be a good season. Everybody's got to go get a new uh, jersey of some kind of new colors and go from there. So good to see that. Yep. And it's interesting to see in your first interview that they're interested in being part of the community. And, and that's one of the things that's that nice, goes, yeah. yeah, but to, for him to mention that right yeah. off the bat really shows that that's a good look. Yep. So over the weekend at NFL was the hall of fame induction for the last two years um, because last year was canceled because of COVID. So we have a 2020 class of, and I'm going to say some of these names wrong and it's going to be horrible. Uh, Steve Atwater, Steve Atwater, <laughs> Isaac Bruce, great start. Harold Carmichael, Jimbo Covet, Bill Cower. Bobby Dillon, Cliff Harris, Winston Hill, Steve Hutchinson, Urgen James, Edrin James, Jimmy Johnson, Alex Karras, Troy Palomalu, Donnie Shell, Duke Slater, Max Speedy, Ed Sprinkle, Paul Tagliabu, and George Young. And then for this year's class, because they did one and then the other, Tom Flores, Calvin Johnson, John Lynch, Peyton Manning, Bill Nunn, Drew Pearson and Charles Woodson. Pretty star studded lineup there. Yeah. Some good names. Good names. Good ball. Peyton Manning's going to be back this year on ESPN. Going to be interesting to see with his brother there. I can't stand Eli, but really couldn't stand Tony Romo to some degree either. But he's done great in the booth. So maybe Eli's the same way. Wouldn't it be funny to watch Eli and Romo end up together in the booth? That would be I freaking, hilarious. I freaking love Romo in the booth. He's great. He's, he's the best. And ever. everybody's like, I don't understand why. And it's because when you watch football, I want to yeah. I want to talk football. I don't care, you know, what the weather is and who's wearing what and whose girlfriend is at the game and whose boyfriend is at the game and what they're doing and what the fans. I want to watch football. I watch football to escape. And he does that. So. Yeah, he's good. Preseason camps are well underway. Deshaun Watson uh, is back at practice after a five-day absence. Still much drama surrounding the Texans and Watson with the sexual assault allegations that are still being worked out in the courts and law enforcement. Not sure how he can play because when those who test positive for weed for a first offense get out for four to six weeks, but he's still in the NFL for now. So I guess it's welcome to the NFL, which is still a quarterback's league, and he needs to be benched here. It's, it's just so bullshit. Whatever. Uh, so bullshit. It, that's that's all I got. Uh, good bullshit. news for the Giants is, is Saquon Barkley reported back to camp and is practicing. So that's a good sign. Fantasy football's coming up. So he's going to see his draft stock go back up a little bit. The Arizona Cardinals uh, made news this week. They're going to be the first team at their stadium to install sports books. So it begins. Awesome, right? He figured Vegas would be the first one to do that. But these guys got it first. So. And fantasy football is uh, coming back in full swing. And as we get closer to draft days, we're going to start incorporating a little bit more draft news. I'm um, going to see maybe about having Scott or some of the guys on here before we do our fantasy league of jungle land. You know, it's one of those big things that everybody enjoys. So, and I know that's, you know, the one that we have, there's 10 guys and it's, it's just like the league only we don't live in the same house kind of thing. So <laughs> that would be bad. People would probably die. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Yeah. So uh, jumping over to baseball, the AL East, we see some big shakeups. The Rays are um, had a great weekend, and they now hold first place. Boston had a bad weekend, which makes me very happy, and they are now back four games. Yankees are in third place, back six and a half. Blue Jays are back seven, and the Orioles took a step in the wrong direction this weekend. They're uh, now 29 games out of first place, so they're back to being totally irrelevant in my personal record book. That's great. Over in the NL East, there was a big shakeup there as well. The Mets had a horrible weekend, and they are now out of first place, but not just out of first place. They're down to third. So the Phillies are now in first place. Atlanta's back two games. The Mets are back two and a half. Nationals are out nine, and Miami is back 12. So 
weird. Everything all over the place, head to head games, divisional games. It's that part of the season where yep. here comes October. <laughs> here comes October. <laughs> Aren't we in August? Yeah, well, you know what yeah. I mean. End of the seasons in October. Yeah. Be, don't, don't, all right. don't yell at me. The NBA had some big news this week where CJ McCollum is elected to succeed Chris Paul as the president of the Players Association. And the NBA is opening up an investigation into tampering claims surrounding Lonzo Ball and the Kyle Lowry trades. The league is looking into possible illegal contact among players and teams ahead of the opening of the free agency. Sign and trade arrangements are more complicated and time consuming than typical free agent signings, often needing a greater level of discussion and negotiation to be completed. And since these were uh, pretty much right out of the gate, there seems to be some concern by the league. Uh, New Orleans agreed to trade Ball, a restricted free agent, to Chicago on a four-year, $85 million contract for Garrett Temple and a three-year, $15.5 million contract for a guard, and I'm not even going to say his name, Tomas. That's great. Sources say the deal was finalized with the league office and announced Sunday with a 2024 second-round draft pick and cash considerations going to the Pelicans. Then jumping over into Miami, they had a three-year, $85 million deal for Lowry with a sign-and-trade and sent guard Goran Dragic and Precious. And I have a phone call from probably somebody with my car warranty. That's great. <laughs> to the Raptors. The Heat guaranteed Drag- Dragic's deal of $19.4 million and sent him on his way. So I guess the concern is, is that there's some illegal talking with before everything goes in. Reading into some of it, though, I didn't know, like, team execs can have their phone, text, and emails randomly audited. It's just weird. But since the uh, the one thing that the report said is they're looking at what happened with the Sacramento Kings and the Bucks a couple years back with uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, where he went in and there was some talking with, and they were worried about the Bucks, but the Bucks never traded him. He went to Atlanta. So it's all weird, but you know, but then they're going to find weird. LeBron 10 grand, 10 grand to the team for the Lakers. Cause he said, well, he can come over here and now Carmelo Anthony's on the team, but nobody wants to talk about that. <laughs> Jumping over to formula one. They are now in their summer break, but the drama from the last race in Budapest at the Hungarian grand prix is not over. As we talked about last week, Sebastian Vettel finished second in the race. However, the race stewards called for a fuel check on a few cars, one of which was Vettel's. During the check, it was determined that there was not enough fuel left in the car to satisfy the post-race requirement. The team had their second place win pulled. Today, there was a press conference for members of the Aston Martin team to appear to discuss the case. It was reported by Autosports that the team believes that they have discovered significant new evidence that was not available uh, trackside uh, during the post-race check. The team has been adamant that all the sensors and calculations show, and this is going to be hilarious because of how the metrics are, you know, perfect with that sport, that there should be 1.74 liters of fuel remaining. The stewards were only able to remove 0.3 liters of fuel. That leaves a difference of 1.44 liters that are unaccounted for. The team's principal has said that the team found an error with the lift pump inside the car, which has likely caused the fuel testing efforts to not be able to remove the allotted amount needed. If the stewards are convinced by these findings, a hearing date will be set. So there's the precision of Formula One. That makes me a fan sometimes. Uh, NASCAR was in Watkins Glen this weekend, uh, which played host to all three NASCAR events. So starting on Saturday afternoon, the Camping World Truck Series was up first, and we saw Austin Hill in the number 16 car take the victory there. Then over to the Xfinity Series later that night, Ty Gibbs in the number 54 car took the checkered flag. Then the big event on Sunday was the Cup Series, where we saw Kyle Larson in the five car finish first ahead of Chase Elliott in the number nine. All weekend, our friend Kyle Stevens was trackside and got some really great friggin' pictures. Um, So we'll be sharing those on our Facebook. So go check that out. He's got his new uh, camera there, too. And I know it it shows. It shows. Yeah, it does make a difference. It does. You have to have the skill, but equipment helps. Right. Just like I said, that lighting. 15 grand, give me 15 grand. My pictures would look a lot better. Yeah, he got a he got some picture of the the sky or something like that and I I I didn't even need to be there. It's just it's it's wow. freaking clear. So, cool. And I mean, he's he's trackside. Some of the teams were picking up his uh photos. He took stuff on Saturday that round by the end of the race and stuff like that. Their social media was giving him credit and using it on their oh, official nice. pages, so nice. it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. College football is still being talked about as summer preseason is quickly drawn to a close with the weekend openers coming up. 
Last week, the Big 12 commissioner said he was exploring whether aligning with the Pac-12 could help save their conference. The remaining Texas schools and their politicians are banding together, and we're going to have more bullshit. Of course we are, (laughs) because there's a lot of money on the line. It was reported earlier that the Pac-12 and the AAC may merge. Um, Irregardless, the fabric of football is very much going to be altered by all of these moves. I love my college football, but everything that they're talking about right now is a generational impact for multiple generations. Yeah. Uh, They're throwing around Super League, which I'm kind of ambivalent about both ways. Uh, You know, the SEC is already a Super League. They do what they want anyway. The NCAA is is just ridiculously pointless at this point. And uh, irregardless of what happens, it's going to be interesting. And because Oklahoma and uh, Texas are by 2025 or earlier going to be in the SEC, so... So here's uh here it is. So okay, there's so uh, the sad I'm news. Supposed... We're going to start off with some sad news. Oh. The college football uh, world on Sunday heard about the passing of Bobby Bowden. He was 91 years old. It was reported back in July that he was diagnosed with a terminal condition, which was later to be revealed as pancreatic cancer. Bowden was the head coach of Florida State from 1976 to 2009. He has two national titles, 12 ACC titles. His coaching tree includes many to the likes of Mark Reich, Kirby Smart, Manny Diaz and Jimbo Fisher, and that's just to name a few. So one interesting fact I found over the weekend when reading through all of his tributes. During Bowden's first year as a head coach at West Virginia, their other state top divisional school, Marshall University, lost their entire football team in a plane crash. Bowden asked the NCAA for permission to wear Marshall jerseys and play Marshall's final game of the 1970 season against Ohio, but was denied. In memory of the victims, uh, the crash victims, Mountaineer players put a green cross and the initials MU on their helmets for that season. Bowden allowed Marshall's head coach, Jack Liniel, and his assistants access to game film and playbooks to acquaint themselves with the offense and variation of the option, which aided the weak team to come back because they had lost their coaching staff as well. Liniel credits Bowden with helping the young thundering herd recover. Bowden reportedly became very emotional during the private viewing of We Are Marshall when he told people around him he was the original candidate for the Marshall head coaching job that was filled by crash victim Rick Tully. That makes shivers go up your spine. I, 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 Uh, I just, I read that thing and I'm like, this, no way. It was his first year in West Virginia. Wow. And if take this to be true, he had he had signed with West Virginia over Marshall for whatever reason, and that decision saved his life. Wow. Jeez. And then I watched We Are Marshall because I, I absolutely <laughs> had to. So <laughs> no. that was my Sunday night. That was a long time ago, last time I saw that. Yeah. Got to, now now I've got to go see it. Was yeah. it on Netflix or what? Um it was on demand someplace. I forgot oh, okay. where it was. All right. So but yeah, that 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 blew my mind. So not only was it the, you know, the, the gentleman like of saying in, in, you know, interstate rival and everything like that with the patches on the back and they wanted to play the final game, but that little tidbit at the end, just, wow. Yeah. Olympic news. Uh, so the final medal count, United States took the lead there, 113 overall medals with 39 of them gold. China came in second with 88 overall and 38 gold and the Russia Olympic Com- Russian Olympic committee had 71 overall with 22 gold. A local connection here, the Team USA won their seventh consecutive women's basketball gold medal against Japan on Saturday. Former CNS player Brianna Stewart was among the team to bring home the gold. The women beat Japan 86 to 69, so that's pretty cool to see there. Um, And we ended last week with some shocking news out of Syracuse University. Coach Quentin Hillsman had resigned as the head coach. Syracuse.com had a scathing editorial opinion printed in the Sunday papers, I believe, and it was posted online. They called out every level of the administration at the university and the athletic department with how out of touch they are, the feel and the vibe at the university and what they thought the university was really doing. Not a good look at all. Um, Again, it's their opinion, but feel free to take a a look at the editorial page. We're going to, we're going to post it on Facebook over the week. Um, It was bad. I mean, they call every single level of the administration from top to bottom out. Um, and th- they they reference everything going on to Albany and how it's systematic and it's cultural, and they draw the parallel pretty bad. So bad time to have that backdrop in New York and have yeah. something to tie to it. So yeah. 
but you know, it, it reading some of the, the things that came out afterwards, how did they miss it? And that's one of the questions that they asked is how did they miss everything going on? Because it wasn't just one season, it was two. And when you have a mass exodus of players like that, 20 over the last two years with 13 or 14 or whatever the number was over the last, after the last season, nobody checks into these things. <laughs> it's all, it's, it's in your mind. Yeah. 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 Uh, and finally for this week, I'm going to plug a fellow podcaster and a friend from high school, Bobby Ramunda. Um, he has a podcast with him and his brother, which is called Windfall. And then they have a, which is coming back for a second season. And they're starting a new thing, which I thought is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to turn it, tune in myself. It's called Forgive Me. It's about a small town Catholic church in upstate New York with every episode being a different confession. What? So he, 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 he writes plays and the right. kinds of stuff like that. So there, he's already got a, a, with his brother, a podcast called Windfall. Right. And they're doing a new one. And it's, it's basically like each week is going to be like you're a fly on the wall inside of a confessional, but it's like, <laughs> and it's at a Catholic church in upstate New York. And he's originally from Herkimer. I think he lives down in the city or Syracuse now. Um, and I, I just, he, he put out a, a thing and I'm like, you know, I'm going to plug that for you because that that's just that, cool. That's, that can go a lot of different ways. Yeah, it can. Yeah. And, uh, so Do the people know that he's recording this or well it, it's 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 obviously all made up it's it's totally fiction but i'm sure there's is it i mean he's going to make it up as fiction because i don't think he's lived here in like the last 10 years or so but it's probably going to hit close to home for a lot of people every week which is going to be even the more funny thing because if you're mad you got to ask yourself why you know we got to come up with a unique idea like that yeah yeah something really cool but you know and and that's Conf just how about confessions of a urinal <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> but we're going to, we're going to plug that on our, uh, there, you, that's totally <laughs> accurate there, but I'm going to, I couldn't get to it quick enough. <laughs> 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 it's off the rails. We're it's off the rails here. I had the volume down. That's had, all right. Had to get it. But I, I'm I'm plugging that for him. So feel free to check that out. It's going to be on our Facebook page as well. And and feel free to tune in and help out him uh, over there with him and his brother, both from originally Herkimer. So that's a little cool. And so, coaches, staff, and players, please include your sports reporting, um, especially coming up for the fall season for all the things that haven't started yet at Sportsbeat MyLittleFalls.com for updates and highlights throughout the week. Find us on Facebook at Sports Beat with Rob Drum. For all your local sports news and our podcast home, find us at mylittlefalls.com. For Rob Drum, here with Dave Warner, talk to you soon.